welcome, my dear viewers, and a very warm welcome to the Today's Woman Show brought to you by BF Soap. Every woman knows what she wants, and Lydia Female Contraceptives. With Lydia, you decide. I'm sure you all know that there's a fine line between sanity and insanity, and there's a school of thought that says there's a little bit of madness in every one of us. That brings us to our topic of today. But before then, I'd like to share some pearls of wisdom with you. And it's a quote from Mother Teresa, which says that, and I quote, I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples. We're going to go for a short commercial break. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Today's Woman Show. I'd like to acknowledge our sponsors once more, and that's BF Soap. Every woman knows what she wants, and Lydia Female Contraceptives. With Lydia, you decide. Now, I did hint earlier that um, my guest had something to do with mental health. Now, I want you to watch this video, and when you come back, I'll tell you her name and the many accolades she has to it. In the early colonial era, patients suffering from mental illness in the Gold Coast and now Ghana were usually kept in prisons. Prior to this period, psychiatric patients were left on their own to fend for themselves or sent off to traditional healers. In 1888, the colonial government passed a legislative instrument signed by Governor Sir Griffiths to establish a lunatic asylum in a vacated high court building in Accra. It was not until 1904 that a purposeful psychiatric hospital was built called the Accra Psychiatric Hospital. The hospital was officially commissioned in 1906, initially to accommodate 200 patients. The Accra Psychiatric Hospital during this period was the only established psychiatric facility in West Africa. A second psychiatric hospital was built in 1950, followed by a third 20 years later. Indeed, many patients from neighboring West African countries came to receive psychiatric treatment in the Gold Coast in the late 19th century. However, none of these three hospitals was located in the northern sector of the country. Traditional practitioners contributed a great deal to the treatment of mentally ill patients in the northern sector of the country until the early 80s where a team of three psychiatric nurses were posted to the northern region to start psychiatry in the Tinsampa Hospital. Among these three, the only woman, Amina Bukhari, stood to the test of time and survived. Amina Bukhari, the first northerner to read psychiatric nursing in Ghana, is among the first ten nurses to be trained in psychiatric nursing in Ghana. Before Madam Bukhari came in, there was virtually no uh, psychiatry in this region. She introduced psychiatry into this region and did a lot, helped put up the structure. You know, the, our old uh, hospital was renovated and that they were there alone actually before later on Dr. Sorry introduced a central uh, hospital and eventually the whole place is now back to uh, it's, uh, it, it was previously as a hospital but Madame Bukhari started it and she brought psychiatry into the northern region introduced community psychiatry in the northern region and did other things and even especially she was uh, when I was in Bali by then as a district director and she was uh, my district parent and she was always there when we needed her even came when we didn't need her to, her to guide us so she did a lot actually for this region Twenty years after the introduction of Amina and her colleagues to the northern region, a non-governmental organization, Basic Needs, a mental and development advocacy organization, started its operations in the northern region with a vision that people with mental illness or epilepsy live in dignity and satisfy their basic needs and exercise their basic rights. We describe Basic Needs as a development organization uh, that has uh, focused its efforts on mental health and development, working to ensure people with mental illness live 
and work successfully in their communities. Uh, that people with mental problems are a very disadvantaged group that are stigmatized and vulnerable to many social and economic challenges of life who need to be supported to address their poverty and mental illness and for that matter being able to also participate in development processes just as what you would call normal people do. Despite recent advances in psychiatric services, many citizens still believe in the traditional forms of psychiatric treatment. Up to 70% of patients or their relatives would opt for herbal or traditional treatment. Often, patients are taken out of the hospitals by relatives in order to consult a traditional or spiritual healer because of a widely held belief that psychiatric illness is caused by supernatural evil forces that can best be banished by traditional medicine. With practices such as these, the intervention of basic needs with the aim of creating awareness about mental health was highly in order. We have undertaken activities that, has, uh, that have brought about a large increase in level of knowledge and awareness and acceptance of mental health as a condition that everybody could have and so should be accepted at every sphere of life and if you happen to have it there are remedies for it so the whole issue of awareness creation and making people accept it as a normal condition in life which can be managed by professionals has been very very widely done by basic needs. This is the reality in which psychiatric practice has existed for more than a century in Ghana. In some situations, it is most impossible to determine if a patient's recovery can be attributed to medication or through the intervention of the traditional healer or both. With most of her colleagues having left in search of greener pastures, Amina Bukhari, with the help of basic needs, continued with the provision of mental health to the regions in the northern sector. When they came, actually it wasn't easy for them because they had to go to community to community to educate people on mental health. And she was a hardworking woman. She liked her work. She loved people, even to her clients. Some would come dirty. She would make sure we buy soap, feed the patient, and give the, follow the client to the house with the client. We we'll go for home visiting to visit the client to see how they are faring. If, you, if she shadows you and you don't go, because when you come back, you have to go. But if not, when you come back, she will ask you about the client. How is the client? And if you don't go, how can you report? And she was somebody who loved people, loved her work. Anytime she makes sure there's drugs. So stamina even created some districts because she created Salga and Yendi. And she has trained me in a way that I'm not a psychiatry nurse, but she has taught me how to work. And I think I should appreciate what she has done for me. With a population of an estimated 25 million people, Ghana can only boast of 15 psychiatrists in the country. One of these specialists has been taxed to supervise the three northern regions, but with limited resources. A mental health is now better than it was before. Uh, we have a new, uh, a new clinic here, which we just got about six months ago. And then we got basic needs to finish, uh, to give us, to finish it. The growth has been that they have now have a psychiatrist who can go on outreaches. And then uh, to do qualified uh, examination evaluations of patients. 
And then we have uh, the teaching hospital uh, with a, a psych clinic there, uh, which is a plus. Though the struggle for a better mental health system in the northern region and the entire country cannot be overemphasized, it will be unacceptable to ignore the role Madame Amina Bukhari has played in this sector. As a young man, I grew, got born again as a Christian. I was very committed to my Christian life. I never knew what was girlfriends. So I completed school, finished. Then I met her. I met her and then we got married. So the f f third, second born, then December 1999, 24th, then she picked up. I didn't take it so kind because I was asking myself so many questions. So it took about four months in addition and she was not getting help. So I couldn't take it light because my farmer in the first place wanted to marry for me. They actually brought a lady to the house as my wife and I sacked the lady saying that I have not prayed and that is not my wife until I met her. So the family in that case just said, that is my case. I have gone to look for my case. I should take it. So they didn't take it so kind with me. So they all pushed me aside to take my problems. And I have to run place. Thank God I met uh, Madam Amina, uh, who consoled me a lot and gave me a deep education about some of these uh, issues. And uh, we had to go with her to Pantang by her help. It has been the continuous encouragement with Madam Amina, with her colleagues, just educating me. Her phone never lies down, calling me and educating me about the issues, about some of these cases. So Madam Amina, the only thing I would just say is that God will never leave her alone. God is still searching to locate her and make her. And I know God is still holding her life that she would benefit the fruits of her labor, if not in financial terms, but in blessings in any other kind. Even though Madam Amina has retired after 26 years of active service in psychiatry, she still continues in rendering her service to the betterment of mental health in the country. She currently works as the national coordinator of community psychiatry. And we are lucky that I, I can say that we are lucky that sister is also at the national level. So what happened is that the psychiatric nurses, they are responsible in posting them. So a lot of them have been sent to us here through her, her, her efforts. The Today's Woman Show would like to applaud, reward, award and acknowledge the works of Madame Amina Bukhari in the words of playwright William Congreve in saying, Blessings ever wait on virtuous deeds and though elate, a sure reward succeeds. Madame Amina Bukhari, Ayiko. Viewers, I have with me Madame Amina Bukhari. Welcome to the studio, ma'am. Thank you. Ma I, I told you I'd like, I'd like to call you Hajia. No problem. Okay. No so problem. I want you to sort of tell us a little bit about how you got into psychiatric nursing. Thank you for your question. I got to psychiatry through my aunt, mm -hmm. who was a, a cook in the mental hospital mm -hmm. then. So when I finished school from St. John's Grammar School on holidays, she told me, oh, they were recruiting people, write an application, I'll send it, so that you go and do mental nursing. I said, eh? But I didn't show it. I wrote it, and we went for aptitude tests. I did well. Mm -hmm. and. On her return from work that day, she came and embraced me and said, I've made her proud. So I will report. And they were calling us candidates under trial okay. at CUT. Okay. So we started work just to see whether you can work or not. Okay. They sent me to female infirmary. Okay. Then uh, somebody died on the ward. When I went home, I never returned. Wow. For five days. Baptism of fire. <laughs> for five days, I wasn't going to work. So my in charge then told my auntie that, ah, your child has not been coming to work. He said, oh. So I leave her in the house and she won't come to work. In fact, instead of insulting me or something of that sort, she came and told me, oh, my dear, where I've put you, 
you become a very big woman in Ghana in psychiatry. That time I will be dead. Your father will be dead. So please, 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 go and do it for me. So what she told me entered me. I couldn't disappoint her. But before then, I wanted to be like a Adi Zamunkaela, a broadcaster. <laughs> You, you, you wanted a bit of showbiz. Yes. So when she said that, I said, okay, I made up my mind that I'll work. So I worked. We were in training. We went through examinations. And God being what he is, I qualified, came out successfully. And I was working. Got married. Delivered to. And then I decided I'll go back to school. I went to Ifyan Kwanta to read state registered nursing came back to Pantan to read mental nursing properly. Okay. So from there I was there, my boss called me, I mean I get ready and go to your hometown to Wait. open psychiatry. Because because you were a southerner. You were yeah, born yeah. and bred like you said, born, bred, battered and toasted in the south. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Huh? So Mrs. Kumi said, get ready and go to open up psychiatry in the north. But to be honest with you, she is presently the queen mother of Manfi. Mm -hmm. She promoted me from staff nurse to a nursing officer, which was an inspiration. For you to go. Yes. When, when she daunted, but you must have had family up north, or you didn't? No, no I didn't have family in the north. All my family, they were here. Wow. But unfortunately for me, I was pregnant two months, my last boy. Mm -hmm. So, and I had appointment in Nigeria to work in Kano. Okay. I went there on a visit and they admired me and the, the governor then, Abu Bakar Rimi, said I should come back to work. Then they gave me a VW and 1,000 Naira. So, I was confused. Going to North, delivering my child, going to the South. Should I abort this child and wow. go, which was criminal. But when I got to Tamale, mm -hmm. The, the in charge I met said, so, oh my goodness, this is a, a nurse, an intelligent nurse from Accra. We didn't have mental health, but I think she would do wonders. But the way I saw your face, if I allowed you to go to Accra, you won't come back, so you are not <laughs> going to Accra anymore. Said in my heart. I said, please, doctor, I didn't have a room. He said, I'll give you quarters. Where were your, your older two? You'd left them back? Yes, okay, with my you, mother. You, okay. So I said, I'll go and collect money. He said, I'll give you money to buy everything. Because <laughs> if I look at your face, you will not come back here. What so was it about the North that, you know, you didn't like? In fact, I, I, when I went first, mm -hmm. I liked everything. Mm -hmm. But I, I had in mind that they were human beings. Yes. People were working there. Yeah. Why should I discriminate? Who am I? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, am I better than them who mm -hmm. were working there? Mm -hmm. And if a sadna has come and is a regional director... And I said, now is a DDNS of the hospital. And what I. What about you, a native? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I accepted. And then this man gave me keys to go for a room. I thought it was a boy's quarters, not knowing it was three bedded bedroom, flat. With, uh, flat with a detached boy's quarters. Boy's quarters. I stayed there. He, he finished the place for me. Then every week he would bring me rice. Soup, oil, oil, everything. But he really made me happy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went there in January 14, 1981. And I delivered 21st July, 81. And he came and congratulated me and said, yeah, I'll take you to your mother in Accra. He picked me in the car, brought me. After two months, he came again and I went, let's go. <laughs> so I was so much annoyed that I said, okay, why is this man pestering my life like that? I'll go and work. So I went and then I decided that I would do the work very, very well. And what my auntie told me came to me. So I started planning, doing everything mm. and reporting to the mm. regional director. Mm. Until 84, I came back to Kolibu to read midwifery. Okay. To make me a full nurse. Wow. So I was a general nurse, psychiatric, psychiatric nurse, nurse. And then, and then a midwife. midwife. Then I majored in community psychiatry. So, so you are just an all-rounded nurse. Yes. An asset to the medical field. Yes. yes. 
Well done. But I mean, when you first went up north, was it what you anticipated? I mean, not not the social sense, but with with mental health practices. Mental health practices that was. Oh, they were non-existent. It was non-existent. So I knew I had a bigger problem to face. Mm. But then I was happy within me the way the director treated me, and I said, I will do everything. You are ready for the challenge. Exactly. Mm. So I wouldn't waste time. Mm. I will mm. work for him to appreciate mm. what he has done to me and pay him back. What did you see that you thought you would want to change? What I saw was that all mental patients were being sent down to Accra, which was costly, time-wasting, and the, all the family, about two, three, will come. They couldn't bear it. Mm. And then, secondly, they were going to the traditional healers, mm -hmm. faith healers. Mm. So I started education mm. on the radio, uh, radio, uh, what is it, Savannah, mm -hmm. the radio stations, in churches, in the mosques, in school. Didn't you come against any form of opposition, considering that, you know, up north, uh, as, as, as Af Africans, we're generally very traditional people, and more so up north, traditional healing seems to be the rather norm than the orthodox. It, rather they enjoyed it, because I, mean, I must say that even the workers themselves, didn't know much about psychiatry. Mm -hmm. In the in the beginning, they thought I couldn't understand how, sir. So they were insulting me. What did I want to tell them? I was in trousers and top. What? <laughs> I want to tell them that I my eyes are open or what? I didn't mind. So we, they organized a workshop where I was to give the uh, help. Yes. When I introduced myself, they said, hey, so all the insult we gave to this <laughs> <laughs> she could understand she it. Could eh? understand. I said, oh, that is how you feel about me. So what about... We became very good friends. Mm. So the, the nurses started liking psychiatry. I must say that I convinced a lot of the general nurses to go and reach psychiatry. And those are the people who are used in the districts. No. But didn't you find that there was a lot of stigmatization? I mean, it still exists. Yes. I'm called Amina Sak. I'm popularly known as Amina Sakatri. You know, I, I was telling you of her. I used to have an aunt who worked as a psychiatric nurse in England. And we just thought she was just as loopy as her no, patients. No, no, you no, know no. What That's I mean. what people think. But they don't know that if you reach psychiatry, you are you are treating yourself in the first place. But I was very um, surprised to hear that there are only fifteen. Well, according to the statistics, yes. there are only fifteen psychiatrists that practice in the entire nation. Yes. Why hasn't why hasn't psychiatry, uh, psychiatric uh, or the psychiatry as a profession been made attractive? Psychiatry itself uh, is is complex. The complexity of the subject itself okay. puts people off. Okay. Then the stigma attached to psychiatry. Mm -hmm. Psychiatry is not lucrative, you see now. And the people, even the government budget, only a peanut is sent to psychiatry. Why should they waste them, them, that time coming? There is money in psychology, though. Well, yeah. as compared to psychiatry. Psychiatry, yeah. Yes. Psychology, you stay with the fellow. You talk. You, relieved and he pay, he pay, you pay him for the time. Exactly. Mm, but not but psychiatry, psychiatry. They think that when you are spoiled, that they bring you there. And then you come and be misbehaving. But like any branch of medicine, and we do have mental, mentally ill patients, any brand of medicine, it should be as profitable as going to see the um, obstetrician uh, or gynecologist. It is all over in the world that psychiatry, if the governments of every country, country. does not take interest in the psychiatry, so it's mm. sickness. Mm. You know. But we have to go for a short commercial break. When we come back, I want to ask you, how traditional um, healing plays in with all of the orthodox healing, okay, especially today. I've come for you, so anything you want to ask me, ask you. Me. Get ready for my answer. <laughs> you guys are going to go for a commercial break. Stay with us. Welcome back to today's Women's Show. As always, I'd like to acknowledge our sponsors. And I, I keep apologizing for wasting your time talking about my sponsors. But without my sponsors, I will not be sitting in this chair. And they are BF Soap. Every woman knows what she wants. And Lydia Female Contraceptives with Lydia, you decide. And for those of you who just tuned in, I have Amina Bukhari, who is actually... Um, what should I say? What should I... I'm thinking of what name to give her. She's one of the... I watch formidable nurses in psychiatric nursing. So, 
here. We're talking about traditional, just before we went on, I said to you, we're going to be talking about the traditional aspect of healing, considering in your parts, those were more predominant than the orthodox healing. Now, how were you able, I mean, you yourself, did you believe in traditional healing? As Ghanaian, mm -hmm. you have been born into it, mm -hmm. whether you like it or not. Even if you are from a Christian home, the first thing was they will go and see the Susia to tell you when you should be born, whether you should come to the world or not. Mm. So we've been born into it, but it's up to you to see whether you believe in it, whether it works. I per se, I don't believe in it, but I cannot stop the people from believing in it mm. because mm. the faith healer or the traditional healer is the first person they will meet in the... First point of, of, of uh, contact. Yeah, exactly, in the, in the uh, remotest village mm. before they can come to hospital. Mm. So we can't tell them not to go mm. or not to seek uh, any advice from them. But then we try to educate the faith healers, traditional healers, and we work in collaboration. Hand in hand. Yes. Mm. We give them drugs and we mm. ask them to supervise them and report to us. Mm. And some of them even give us reports, okay. written reports about their okay. clients. But did you ever, um, were you ever um, sitting in consultation with in a traditional yes. healer's home when they were trying to heal or, or cure one person who was suffering from mental you illness? You wouldn't see it physically mm. because you would see the patient being tied against a stick or sometimes they say I have not witnessed it. Okay. They pour hot water on them to to remove the demon in them and then they get burns. And then the faith healers, they make them fast. Imagine an epileptic and you say you should fast. You twitch. Is ah. epilepsy termed as mental illness? They are similar. They are inseparable things. So they, they are brothers and sisters. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. See, now that, don't let us talk about that. Okay. We yeah. Talk about that. yeah. So we educate them mm -hmm. not to do that. Mm -hmm. And now there is law. If you do that and we get you, you won't go free. Mm. So, I mean, did you have to do a lot of work into bringing people's minds round to seeking the orthodox treatment? Yes, I educated them that we are not against you going to. Amen. Were you a one man army doing that? Not a one hour. I, I went there with three. Two other, pe two two other colleagues. Uh -huh. Yes. But then. I being a woman. Mm -hmm. And also being from the north. Exactly. Or, or were they all, were they they were all colleagues northness. from northers? Okay, yes. they were all northerners. Uh -huh. okay. And they, ne they never saw a woman who has read psychiatry and is talking, yeah, doctor, and other things. So, in fact, I would say that 70% admired me talking to them and dealing with them. Mm. That alone was enough to win exactly. them, you exactly. know, to your Everywhere way of thinking. Went. So, I remember a, a patient was in the room for eight years without seeing the sun. I went and convinced him to take a bath. He took a bath and ate. And then I injected him and brought him to Panta. And he got to her. That was a joy to me. You, ate, you ate with him or he, you, you prepared something for him to eat? And watch no, the him. house people would prepare something. So he something. had been in a room yeah. eight years? Eight years. Self-imposed or they had locked him up in the room? They have locked him up in the room. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Times is just a chemical imbalance. So all they need is love mm. show them love show that you care somebody was throwing stones in the streets of a tamale central tamale near the taxi rank i got there so my friend come 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 hold the bag let's go oh you are handsome oh. hey i've never seen a handsome man like you oh you are you are telling me lies so you let's go we went to market together and then he held my bag came to the taxi rank i gave him cd and he went to every time you come to meet me there to go to market. So I followed him to his house, educated the family, and I put medicine in Fanta and gave him, he drank, and I brought him to Panta. Now he's an allergy, he's married with his children. Huh? Yes. So it's only a small thing. What are the causes? Many, I'm sure, but I mean, give us They're a few. They are multifactorial. Mm -hmm. One hereditary. Mm -hmm. Hereditary, I won't go into yes, details. Yes, not go too much into it, yeah. Two, uh, Situations. Environmental environment stresses and, and yes. strains. Mm -hmm. Accidents. Diseases. And 
sick to a sickening of love when you don't have anybody to love you not sexual love or but just pure and adulterated mm -hmm. adulterate love nobody cares about mm -hmm. you but this if i want to elaborate they will break us mm -hmm. and then the, your constitution the way god made you mm -hmm. because everybody has different strengths exactly mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. So you would, you would say that education has played a, a great exactly, role. Exactly. Change of environment mm -hmm. in an education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, now we're going to take some uh, some words from your colleagues, and no, you probably. haven't heard them yet. Uh, maybe. My my whole crew went up to Tamale because of you. Ajia, I mean, uh, I know a lot, and let me say. I have christened her the mother of basic needs, and she very well knows that. And that tells you the centrality of Amina in the activities of basic needs in Ghana. Before Madam Bukari came in, there was virtually no uh, psychiatry in this region. She has remained one of the key persons in mental health care service delivery in in northern Ghana and now by extension as you know she's a national coordinator for community psychiatry and for that matter the, the entire country. It's a very 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 difficult place where people usually don't want to venture into because people say if you are a psychiatrist and eventually you also become a mad person oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so people usually don't like going in and that's not true anyway that's just a joke but people don't like going to and she like I said single-handedly all who say she's been here she's been alone she's been alone she comes across as a very pleasant character, somebody easy to, to blend with. She comes to your level. You know, Amina, uh, it's a grandi, but we even call her sister Amina. That tells you how low and ready she wants to come down just to make things work. When even you think that there are difficulties, she makes it look light. And, and gives you a certain cheer to continue. The community, they like her. And even if there's a program, and if they say, Sister Amina, you see the, the carers and the clients, they will come in their numbers. Because the way she, she treats them and helps them physically and other things, that's why they liked her. And she's a good woman. Yeah, well, ever since I... I came to, to Ghana, even uh, before starting the job, when I came preliminary, I have been friends with her, and she has been very supportive of me, and uh, she has encouraged me to come to the North, and she is giving me all the support. Uh, she helps me to get medications, and she, was, she is very helpful. She's industrious, she's kind, she gives advice. Whenever you are in a problem, even if she cannot solve the problem for you, she knows the way where she can direct you to go and get a solution to your problem. We cannot thank her for what she has actually done here. And she's, oh, she's a very pleasant person, you know. You cannot refuse her uh, support when she comes to you, soliciting support for psychiatry or any other thing. Like I said, she was oh, my district parent. She did a lot for us in our district, encourages. Bole, this was a very difficult district, unlike now, where people refuse posting to and usually they send people there to ask a punishment and she accepted to be our district parent and came there when we needed her. In time we had the mass uh, interventions like NIDs, she also volunteered to come there and she went around every sub-district. She really groomed me. I used to go with her on outreach services and she taught me a lot of things which has made me popular. The kind of uh, Listen, uh, people talk about me. I'm surprised. Certain times, it's all because of Sister Amina. We thank her very much for what she has done, but would like to con her to continue to deliver the service to us. The whole northern region, not only northern region, Upper East, Upper West, they still like her. Even if they get her, they will get her back to work today. They would have liked it. Even me, myself, I wish sister could have been a, a small girl and come back to psychiatry and take home psychiatry because she's a marvelous mother. And I wish her long life to teach the young ones who are coming to emulate the steps she has taken. And that's why 
I want my daughter to do psychiatry because of Sister Amina. So I thank her very much for what she has even done for me myself. I thank her so, and God will bless her. Madam Amina, we would like on behalf of basic needs and the several thousands of people with mental problems you have reached out to, to thank you for your dedicated services all these decades of life you have uh, given out to mental health work in, in the country. You, we have found you a very hard-working role model for many, many health workers who look up to you for the kind of leadership and sacrifice you have given to the country and to the mental health sector in Ghana's mental health system. We will continue to pray for your good health and long life to remain around, to still show that leadership and example and be a motivation to many others in the mental health field. We thank you. Your kind nature, you're humble, you're helpful. Somebody's daughter, is, she wants her, her to go into psychiatric nursing because of you. How do you feel hearing all of that? Um, I can't describe my feelings. Because when I was working, I didn't know that people were observing this, all these things. What do you think is the one element that you have that has made you this successful? You probably don't see it, but hearing all the words, the very nice words everybody's saying about um, you. I work with all my, I told you, my auntie told me that I should do the work for her. So, I'll, and then I'll become somebody great. That time she's not there. So that ringing in my ears, you know, yeah. I always want to do the right thing. Yeah. Money was not my problem. It wasn't I didn't option. put money before, before me. Your work. No. Mm. There was some, one man, Mr. Bavana, he brought the sister to me. And I tweeted, he said, how much are you paying? My, my parents said, oh, nothing. He said, nothing. Nothing. I said, yes. He was six months after. He brought me a gift, which I don't want to disclose. And it continued every year. He would bring me. And I said, oh, if even if I wanted to charge him, maybe 20 CDs. But what he's brought you has been a for lot more. So now, you still receive from him. Yes. That shows his gratitude for all that you did. Yes. So you're very dear to very many people. You know you are. Even becoming dear to us here at the Today So Much Show. Yes. We're going to go for a commercial break, Hajia. Okay. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back to the Today's Women Show. My sponsors, as always, BF Soap. Every woman knows what she wants. And Lydia, female contraceptives with Lydia, you decide. Now, I just want you to watch this clip. There is a direct correlation between childbirth and mental illness. And I want um, Hadia to shed some light on it. But before she does, let's watch um, a, a lady who actually suffered from mental in illness after childbirth. It was after my delivery i was operated and after the operation it's as if i lost some memory then on now after the operation i used to feel severe headache in my head and i i didn't know it was it was a sickness i always tell my husband i used to tell my husband about it and he, my my parents to realize the way i was behaving wasn't like i used to the way i used to so the my father requested that they send me to the psychiatric hospital here. So at the beginning, I came here and then doctor helped me by providing the drugs, asking questions about my health. So after that, I started on the medication, but it's increased. Then I was taking out, my father requested that they send me to Cape Coast Psychiatric Hospital. And I was taken to that place for about two months. Then school also resumed then i had to come back so I, I took transfer letter from them i brought it back here then doctor continued the treatment and recently i feel very well in my system even my younger ones when i go there I, 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 I couldn't make them up very well i was like i knew them but i can't remember them properly they realized all of it but after I came back from Cape Coast to this place and 
the treatment doctor gave me, that treatment worked faster because I was able to realize my state as a normal person and the pains in my head reduced and my behavior too was not becoming normal. So I realized I was recovering. It's better. Now I feel normal and I'm able to do my normal work at home, even steady. And I feel okay. The, the pains in my I used to feel weak in my body, all those things have all gone and I feel better. In my states, my father was encouraging, he used to care a lot and he always told me that I shouldn't feel inferior, like I shouldn't feel bad about myself, but I should know that it's a sickness and it will go. And I had faith in him. And my husband was very supportive because when my father realized that I, was, I wasn't well, he was worried and was even angry with him, but he, 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 he calmed down and advised me to follow him to, the, to, to my parents for them to see because they took it too far. They thought it was something that has no cure. So they were all, uh, they were putting pressure on him, but he was humble throughout. Then when I got to Cape Coast, he was the one who took me to the psychiatric hospital and explained everything to them. And whenever I take the drug, you always show concern by finding out how the treatment is working in me and encouraging me to, to calm down and forget of all my worries and feel good. As you can imagine, we've, we had to sort of blur her face to, for, so that um, people wouldn't recognize her. That thing once more against the stigma, stigma, yes, exactly, the stigmatization. Now, would you say postnatal depression, postpartum depression is the same as mental illness? It is After. the same, mm -hmm. but because of the hormonal changes mm -hmm. during pregnancy, mm. and in fact, what I tell you, some people have hereditary tendency. Okay, it's, it, it runs in their family. Okay, like the other guy who spoke. Any time that the wife had delivered, a baby. she will have come to Somebody hospital. Somebody quickly say it was spiritual. Exactly, but then it's due to the changes, you know. Then. The hormonal changes happens, okay. and then maybe the food we eat. Some will say that don't eat this, don't eat that, don't eat when you are pregnant. Mm. But then the baby suffers, mm. and you can react mm. to whatever is happening. Mm. So it's not any demon. Okay. Yeah. So depression and mental illness are they the same? Thing? Oh, depression is one of. A One form of, and a form of mental illness. Oh, so, so you would say depression can progress into into me mental me depression. Yeah, no, 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 no. Depression is mental illness. Okay. Okay. We have major mental illness. We have minor. Okay. The major one, depression is one of them. Okay. Depression mm -hmm. is one of them. So uh -huh. we have to look at people and make sure that they're, they're always happy. Their environment, there's happiness in there. Yeah. Because there are people who are prone to depression, like you said. Yeah. Everybody has different strengths yeah. and what they can take. You uh -huh. see what I mean? So if you know somebody and some who have is, the double faces. Mm -hmm. Depression that comes into aggression. And isn't that the bipolar? Bipolar. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Me, I'm very proud to be a psychiatric nurse. Very, very proud. Because if you like, you can insult me, I won't mind you. If I want to mind you, I'll mind you, but you can insult me the whole day. I just take Switch my off and say, oh, psychiatric patient. A psychiatric patient will come to me and insult me the whole day. He said, look at how you have been. You don't have a husband. You are just staying there. You don't work and you are collecting pay. I say, oh, sorry about that. You, you had quite a few awards. Um, I know that I, I, I have them sort of typed down here, <laughs> but you did quite... You did quite a few, a few you, you, we won quite a few awards. But before we come and talk about your awards, I think your son has something to say about hey, you. Hey, Adi. Yes. <laughs> Adi is a criminal. He's a oh, wow. <laughs> He never told me. Hajiya, Hajiya Amina. Normally, um, I call him Ma, all of us. The whole family, everybody calls him Ma. Um, she's, she's, she's that strict type. That military instant woman, you know. Sometimes, you, when she wants something done, she may, she insists you do it. She hates procrastination. That's one thing. Mm, I think that's I think, and then she's the best mom one can have. Growing up as a young boy, you know, from from as much as I can remember, maybe from our six, seven years, eight, 
onwards. She was so strict, as I said earlier on. Um, she, she was caring. She made sure whatever you wanted, you would uh, you could get, but you had to work for it. Probably, if she, um, you wanted a a wristwatch, you had to clean the whole house to make sure. I mean, you get it. And uh, I think she was trying to tell us that there's nothing nothing good comes easy. Before you get anything, before you get riches, you have to work hard for it. Growing up as a, let me put it, as a psychiatric nurse child, I, I learned how to interrelate with human beings, especially, and, uh, especially my colleagues and even my superiors. It has made me a more disciplined person as, as to in relating to other people. And it has made me to understand um, the plight of psychiatric patients. Especially, uh, not only that, but normal human beings, as uh, the behaviors that everybody puts up. It has made me to really understand, and it is helping me in my, in my work as a human resource manager. Um, what I would like to tell my mom is, I love her so much, and I, I pray for a long life and good health for her. And, uh, and, and I thank her for making me who I am. Yeah, it's very shocked because she got <laughs> he's a little honey is a criminal because he didn't tell you that he had yeah, he had he taped the message for left you left this morning to go back up north yeah he's he works at the new okay the human resource okay officer. okay okay and he just left this morning yeah. and he didn't tell you but it's meant to be a surprise why should he tell you <laughs> he told me that if they should ask me about you what i'll tell them you would like it. <laughs> But you know, I like what he said. Yeah. You know, you, you made them know that everything in life has to be earned and nothing. There's no, there are no free dinners, yeah. you know, and that you gave them everything, which is what every parent does. Oh every parent God. wants to give what is good to their children, but the children have to learn that it's... It's, um, it's cousins lived with us, men. And yes. All of them can cook. They will do everything. They will wash without being told. I'll tell you, do this, do that, do that. When you wake up, that's what you said with military precision. Exactly. When you wake up, wash the toilet, go and wash the bathroom, fetch water, bath, remove your things. When you come, come and wear. Then you wear, uh, you eat to school. Wow. So that's how now they, you, they were going. all brought up. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, we're talking about your achievements. Uh huh. Um, and they stand as best psychiatric nurse in Northern Region 1982. And you'd only been there one year when you got this award because you went in 81, didn't you? And then it says best regional health worker in the Northern Region 2003. National best regional health worker in Accra in 2000. So we are saying a year call to you here from the Today's Woman team. And we have a little something for you which we would like to present to you. Adia. Oh. God bless you. Oh. Adia. Oh. Have a seat, Adia. Have a, have a seat. Before all those things, in mm -hmm. 1957, Independence Day, mm -hmm. I was awarded the best scholar in Akutia. Wow. And the uh, uh, chief of, they were changing them. And now uh, I'm a Give me a price of 31 steps book, some exercise books. That day, my father was very proud. He came and put me on his shoulder. So that was my first, first award. award. It's 1957 mm -hmm. Independence Day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think Ghana rewards its heroes? Those they know, especially politically mm -hmm. known. We're going to see what we can do in our little way <laughs> to make sure you get an even bigger award <laughs> than that which you're holding Thank there. you, Adrian. May God yeah. bless you. May God bless you, Mohaja. I hope you've enjoyed Hadja's story. Whoever, whatever you took from it, please remain inspired by it.